Now, in the wake of the horrific attacks in Brussels this morning, the Republican candidates that are still in the race have all uh, weighed in, and of course it's going to be filled with, first, uh, stupid and ignorance. Uh, now, actually, I want to start with the most reasonable and sensible reaction of the three, and for that, I'll actually go to John Kasich. Take a listen. Well, clearly, our intelligence capability to cooperate uh, around the world is uh, is really got great vulnerabilities. And I think what the president needs to do is to come home, uh, to communicate with all the heads of state, to put together a team of people to examine our vulnerabilities, to develop a much deeper and closely coordinated uh, intelligence operation, because the way you deal with this is obviously to make sure that you have the counterterrorism capability to be able to uh, to stop these kinds of unbelievable, uh, well, the, with the murdering that has gone on here. And um, so we need much closer cooperation with people who share our values around the world. And the president needs to move quickly. He needs to assemble a, gr a group of people who can dig in and begin to rebuild the intelligence that we need worldwide. And of course, it at some point here, we need to confront ISIS and we need to destroy them. Uh, so I see it as a kind of a two-fold process. We put together the coalition to destroy ISIS and take the activity, the action, the comprehensive action, and secondly, of course, to rebuild the intelligence community worldwide. All right, so fairly reasonable. Oh, let's rebuild the intelligence community. I get a little nervous at that because then I think of spying in on Americans. I'm not exactly in favor of that. I don't know if he that's what he meant, but okay, a uh, fairly reasonable response. Um, you know, a little nitpick uh, on that because uh, once again, I'm not comfortable with mass surveillance and I don't know if that's what he meant. So uh, now we go to our next one, not so reasonable. We go from reasonable to not so reasonable. And that means we go to Ted Cruz. In the wake of Brussels, we don't need another lecture from President Obama on Islamophobia. We need a commander in chief who does everything necessary to defeat the enemy. And we need to immediately halt the president's ill-advised plan to bring in tens of thousands of Syrian Muslim refugees. Our vetting programs are woefully insufficient. This administration has no means of preventing those refugees from being ISIS terrorists. ISIS has stated its intention to infiltrate those terrorists, th those refugees, with terrorists coming to America to commit acts of jihad. And the time for the po president's political correctness has passed. The first priority of the commander in chief should be keeping America safe. Okay, so there's Ted Cruz. Uh, immediately, it's all Obama's fault. Obama, his, his political correctness, uh, that's the problem. No, it wasn't actually the terrorists. It's, the, it's, it's Obama's political correctness that's the problem. And the refugees. Of course, I'm going to throw the refugees under the bus. <laughs> hey, what do you expect from... Ted Cruz. Now, now I've got to note, he's fear-mongering about the Syrian refugees, right? No, these are the same refugees that are fleeing ISIS. Oh, the, the president, he's got no way to check to see if they're terrorists. Oh, really? Actually, we do. See, his whole implication is that we just need to vet them better, and President Obama doesn't want to do that because of his, he's so politically uh, correct. All right, well, Ted, what's Ted Cruz has planned for that. Now look, I'm, I'm for border security. I'm for checking people at the border. There's nothing wrong with that. So, tell me, what steps will Ted Cruz take to make sure that our border checks are strong enough to catch potential terrorists? Now currently, we actually have a very, very strong system. Uh, a refugee wanting to come to America doesn't even set foot in American soil for at least a year and a half, about 18 months to three years due to the stringent levels of background checks and background interviews. We make sure to check them out as much as we can, interview them, watch them to make sure they don't do anything, uh, you know, that are, that's uh, 
out of place, I guess. Suspicious. That's the word I'm looking for. We watch them. We make sure that they're not. And if you do anything suspicious, suspicious, well, you're off the list. You might even get arrested. Who knows? But it certainly isn't a weak program that we have. So how would Ted Cruz take our already very strong program for entering the U.S. as a refugee? How would he make that stronger? I don't know. He hasn't come out with any specifics other than, I guess, ban Muslims until we figure out what's going on. Well, that actually goes to Donald Trump. We'll cover him in a minute. Maybe Ted Cruz has no plan and he's just bullshitting about our standards being weak so we can use it as a talking point to attack Obama and to play on people's fears. Uh, that's an important thing, right? Playing on people's fears. But we actually have some of the strongest system uh, of uh, taking in and vetting refugees in the entire Western Hemisphere. Now, will it stop all potential terrorists? No. You can't have a system that catches 100% of them. However, it already does a pretty good job considering how few terrorist attacks actually happen in the U.S. So, at least from abroad. Now, on that, we actually have many more domestic terrorist attacks from, for example, anti-government extreme right-wingers than we do foreigners coming over and waging jihad. And those are the numbers. Now, where do I get those numbers from? Well, uh, this is according to the New America Foundation. Now, since 9-11, there have actually been 26 terrorist attacks in the United States. Now, that's a lot. Now, 9-11 being, of course, the biggest and the most uh, damaging. Over 3,000 people killed. Absolute huge tragedy. Huge, 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 right? Now, since then, we haven't had anything even close to that scale. Even those 26 attacks don't even get close to the 3,000 that were killed when the Twin Towers went down. Now, according to the New American Foundation, since that happened, there have been 26 attacks on the United States that are terrorist in nature. None of them, none of them were actually from foreign sources, from refugees or people immigrating to the United States. None of them. All 26 of them have actually been from homegrown terrorists. Now, some of those are from uh, fundamentalist uh, Islamic extremists. How many? About seven. Seven of those. Now, that's significant. Now, there's an issue there. And, you know, we should look into that issue. Of course. But out of the 26 homegrown terrorist attacks, seven of those were related to Islamic extremism. Well, where's the other ones? 19 of these attacks were led by right-wing extremists, including, uh, now, uh, including according to this article from Vox, uh, most recently the mass shooting that killed nine at a black church in Charleston. Now, it's been a while since then. It's an older article. This number actually doesn't include San Bernardino. Or, on the right-wing side, the Planned Parenthood shooter. So those numbers are understandably a little bit higher when you include those in, the most recent terrorist attacks on American soil. So what we have here is an issue of American citizens, both right-wing and Islamic extremists, doing these sorts of terrorist attacks, which means that Ted Cruz is wrong. According to the numbers, refugees are not the source, they're not the main source of terrorists in America. Remember, we've been taking in refugees for years, even from Syria. They've had a civil war going on there for a very long time. We've been taking in refugees and still no refugee related terrorist attacks. But for some reason, our right wing here in America wants us to hate and bar all refugees because, well, hey, just in case. Well, on that logic, should, since we do have a huge gun epidemic, we have a lot of mass shootings that are perpetrated by white Christian men, well, according to that logic, shouldn't white Christian men be barred from owning a gun? I mean, that's, look, just in case, just in case, right? Maybe until we figure out the problem. No, that's preposterous. That's a ridiculous idea. Of course not. But see, what we're doing is we're applying that logic to one group and not another. 
and the other group happens to be far more dangerous and cause far more deaths in America. Now, like I said, I'm talking about America. Now, there's a serious problem overseas with Islamic fundamentalism and extremism, terrorist attacks. But here in America, the paradigm is a little different. Now, remember how I said we should keep people out until, you know, we solve the problem, right? Well, that brings me to uh, Donald Trump. And I, I will tell you, I've been talking about this for a long time. And look at Brussels. Brussels was a beautiful city, a beautiful place with zero crime. And now it's a disaster city. It's a total disaster. Mr. Trump, and, sorry, and we have ahead. to be very, we have to be very careful in the United States. We have to be very, very vigilant as to who we allow into this country. If you do become president and we're in a situation like this, what would you do to protect America? Well, again, I think I've said it. I would, I would close up our borders to people until we figure out what is going on. Look what, look at Brussels. Look at Paris. Look at so many cities that were great cities. Paris is, is almost, almost as bad. Uh, if you look at, you know, Paris is no longer the beautiful city of lights. Paris has got a lot of problems in it. And all you have to do is speak to the people that live there. And you look at other places where the same thing has happened, and they're in fear. The city's in fear. And we have to be smart in the United States. And when people come in, I mean, we're taking in, uh, we're taking in people without real documentation. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know what they're, what, you know, we don't know where they're from, who they are. You look at them and look at it from any standpoint. They could be ISIS. They could be ISIS related. And, uh, you know, you, we just don't learn. We don't learn. I mean, Brussels is an amazing example. Brussels was an absolutely crime-free city, a one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And now you look at it, it's a disaster. But so more fear-mongering. Fear hmm. That's pretty much what we get from Donald Trump. But, hey, look, at least he didn't blame Obama, right? <laughs> Progress. But, look, it's the same thing. He's blaming the immigrants. Oh, we, we, we don't vet them. Well, remember, it takes a year and a half. We hold them. They don't touch American soil for a year and a half. It's easier to get in uh, as just a traveler, a visitor to the United States, than it is to be a refugee, to apply for refugee status. So hmm, it makes sense that if you're going to, if, if you would actually uh, want to harm the United States, that you actually would just charter a plane and just fly in as a guest. Why would you go through the trouble of being a refugee and applying for refugee status where you're not even going to see the mainland, not even going to step foot for at least a year and a half? And if you're, you know, trying to make something up, trying to pass yourself off as someone that you're not in order to get into the United States to perpetrate terrorist attacks, well, it's going to be a lot harder to do so when you have so much scrutiny from the refugee system that we have in America. We just have a very strong system, but they can get in other ways. Maybe we should look at strengthening those other ways instead of barring refugees from coming in. Because none of the refugees have caused any terrorist attacks. None. But hey, look, it's the immigrants, or it's the refugees. That's who Donald Trump was to blame. Now, we don't actually know who carried out the attack. Now, ISIS has claimed responsibility but still we don't know if it was a belgian national if it's a french national so you know let's not blame the migrants the refugees that are fleeing isis for this issue because simply we don't know remember the paris attackers were both french and belgian nationals now these people got radicalized now in another segment i mentioned how back in the 70s Saudi Arabia and some of the other Persian, uh, very, very wealthy Persian countries started investing in religious conservative schools in Mozambique. Well, that helps lead to radicalization, especially when that area filled with uh, Turkish and Moroccan immigrants from over 50 years ago that settled in that area. So you've got second generation Muslims, essentially, that have a uh, that live in an area with almost 40% unemployment rate, where well, you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have a sense of desperation. You're gonna have these religious schools and you're, you have an atmosphere of fear and division. It's not a good 
Not a good situation. It's not a good situation. But certainly, it's not the refugees fleeing ISIS that's a problem. It just it happens to be, more likely than not, people living in Western countries getting radicalized by ISIS and their propaganda. That's one of the major problems here. And blaming all Muslims, not just the terrorists and all the refugees, simply doesn't help to solve the problem. All it does is create fear and division, and that ultimately helps ISIS.